Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to get your curves velocities to match in After Effects. Knowing this simple trick will enable you to have more control of your curves which will ultimately yield better animations. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we are talking about how to match curves velocities with Inside After Effects. Um, now this is more of a quick tip, so I'm going to try to make it quick, but I think it's also important that I go through a little bit of the fundamentals for those of you who might be um, new to animation. Uh, but as animators in general, whether you're new or experienced, it's important that we have uh, control over our animations and we understand what's happening with them and we can fix problems that we have or we can make problems if we want right if we want it to be bad uh, but ultimately regardless of what you're trying to do you should have control over your animations and your curves um, so what do I mean by control so um, if you're familiar uh, with animation after effects um, what I have here or just animation in general what I have here is I just have just a simple cube that's moving in from A to B and it's moving in a linear fashion now, what do I mean by linear fashion? Um, it's not actually moving at a different velocity. It's always at the same speed, A to B. And uh, let's face it, this is this is quite boring. Um, if we come over here and we look at our curve or lack thereof, we see that's just a straight line because nothing's changing. So in the real world, this this doesn't happen, right? Nothing is exactly perfectly linear. So most of the time, if not 100% of the time, you're not going to want this. So what we're going to want to do. Um, keyframe assistant easy ease now what easy ease is going to do and again um, just stick with me and I'll, I'll get to the trick here what easy ease is going to do is it's going to get you a curve right and this curve is going to tell it to slowly ramp up to the speed and then go back down um, to a slower speed right or to the end um, so but once again it's it's quite boring so a lot of times what animators will do is they'll come in here and they'll start pulling the curves is what I always say. You just pull the curves and you try to make something cool, right? And then you just kind of get good at it after after a little bit of time. You kind of get good at like knowing like, all right, if I pull this out, it's going to kind of whip in when I come in and then it's going to come to a nice slow stop. So that's cool. So like we like that. But like what if we wanted to take this a step further and we wanted to scale it up? Okay, great. So let's, let's put a scale in here. So let's go back here and... Um, let's set a scale keyframe so it lands at 100 and it starts at 10. Um, and once again, we don't want linear, but let's just look at our curve. So right now we have a curve that's doing this, but we also have a curve that's just flat. So let's just see what this looks like. I mean, it's like, it's bonkers, right? It looks stupid. Um, and the reason why it looks stupid is because these curves don't match. And again, you don't always want the match, but sometimes you do. So in this case, I do want the match. So how do I get them to not look like this? How do I get them to cooperate together and to like each other? So what we need to do is, first of all, let's make this not linear. Um, so I'm gonna make it so it's uh, it actually has a curve, right? It still looks terrible because they don't match. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna try, let's just like pull this out or something, see what happens. Whoa, this is maybe kind of getting cool, but not really cool still. It's still weird. It doesn't match. So as we pull this, I see I have something here that says influence. Now that influence is basically saying, like, what is the influence of this handle on this curve? So if I keep pulling, it's basically the higher the influence, the more it's going to kind of ease in, ease in. So, all right. So, like, what's my influence on my position? So if I come over to my position, I see it's like, okay, it's 70... 5.8 or whatever so I could come here and I could go like okay 75.8 and try to get it right but chances are it's going to take me all day and what happens if I continue to make updates right it's never going to be quite right so how do we fix this so this is where the trick comes in all right so what you want to do is we have a way of manually entering in these influences right we have a way of manually telling the curve what we want it to be and it's very simple so let's go to our position and let's go to our keyframe velocity I just I just right clicked here by the way so keyframe velocity now we're only concerned with our outgoing velocity so this outgoing velocity is 44.4 for the position so I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna go to my scale velocity and for my outgoing it's just set to the default 3333 I'm just gonna paste that and then for my incoming velocity or excuse me, yeah, my incoming velocity for my last frame, 75.8. And then let's go ahead and go to my scale again. And right now it's set to 100, so let's go 75.8. So now we have a much nicer animation that 
they talk nice to each other, right? Like they, they actually match in their velocities in and out. And the reason why this is higher is because it's traveling a bigger distance. But if these two were to be scaled proportionately, they have the same curves that are happening. Um, so this is important because now, I mean, yeah, we can, you can come in here and you can pull. Now I could just easily just pull both of them. And now if I pull both of them, they're always going to be the same because I know they match. Um, and, uh, and what's even cooler is like, you can come over here and I can even go, I can move this like first one and it should stay the same. Cause it's always, it's being told to always maintain that velocity, no matter what it's going to maintain that velocity. So we're always going to get that nice result, um, no matter how we do it. Uh, so yeah, so this is, this kind of, this is pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's a very simple trick, but I feel like it's a little bit underrated and I, I thought it was important for, uh, us animators to know. Um, so I hope it helps and I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.